Well, you know we all have to go to school, and here in England, children from the ages of 5 to 16 are entitled to free state schools. So in this video, I'm going to be covering some of the best school options for you, and you don't want to miss it. As I mentioned, in this video we're going to be talking about the school options for you. So let's dive in. The first one's going to talk about are the free state schools. But within that, you've actually got a lot of variety that let's, we're going to cover right now. First up, we might want to talk about community schools. They're sometimes called local authority maintained schools. They're not influenced by business or religious groups and follow the national curriculum. Next up are foundation schools and voluntary schools. They're funded by the local authority but have more freedom to change the way they do things. Sometimes they're supported by representatives from religious groups. Or you might choose an academy or a free school. These are run by non-for-profit academy trusts and are independent from the local authority. They have more freedom to change how they run things and can follow a completely different curriculum. Or you might want to look at grammar schools, which can be run by the local authority, a foundation body, or an academy trust. They select their pupils based on academic ability and there is a test to get in. That means that they're not attached to a catchment area for entry. Next up, we can talk about private schools. These are also called independent schools and there will be a fee to attend them. They're completely independent and they can create their own curriculum and don't have to follow the national curriculum. A lot of expats might want to consider these or also maybe uh, send their children to attend one particular to their home nationality if they know that perhaps their stay in the UK might be a temporary situation and want their children to be able to flow in and out of that international curriculum. Some private schools also specialize in helping children with special needs. Other types of schools might include state boarding schools or special schools. There are actually state boarding schools which will be free to attend, but there'll be a cost for the boarding. Most state boarding schools are academies, some are free schools, and some are run by local authorities. They'll often give a priority to children who have a particular need to board and will be assessing their need and their ability to adjust to a boarding environment. Then there are special schools. If your child has special education needs, they can attend a special education school. Special schools with pupils aged 11 and older can specialize in one of the four areas of special education needs. The first could be communication interaction, cognition and learning, or social, emotional, and mental health, and finally, sensory and physical needs. Schools can further specialize with these, within these categories to reflect the special needs they may help with. For example, autistic spectrum disorders, visual impairment or speech, language, and communication needs. Next, let's talk about faith schools. They have to follow the national curriculum, but can choose what they teach in the religious courses. Faith academies are actually different than faith schools in that they don't have to follow the national curriculum and can have a different admissions process. If none of these work for you, you might think about homeschooling, and that is an option here in the UK. You must make sure that your child receives a full-time education from the age of five, but you don't have to follow the national curriculum. The council can make an informal inquiry to check your child is getting a suitable education at home. They can serve a school attendance order if they think your child needs to be taught at school. If your child has special needs and they were attending a special needs school, you need to get specific council approval if you wanted to try to teach them at home. However, you don't have to get the council's approval if your child is attending a mainstream school and has special needs. So, how are you going to get your kids to school? Well, in the U.S., we are known for our big yellow buses and that's really part of the national identity. Unfortunately, here in the U.K., most schools, especially state schools, are not going to have a busing system. So, you're going to have to get your kids to school. What is surprising to me is the fact that I see a lot of young students actually getting on the tube and public transportation network, so that definitely seems like a good option for many parents and their children. Or there's also the famous school run, so you might drop your kids off daily, whether that's by driving, walking them, or even cycling, so there'll be plenty of choices for that. Either way, you're definitely going to have to figure out how to get your kids to school. If you are going to look into putting your children on the public transportation network, there will be discounts or even free ridership depending on their age. And those children ages 16 or older can still apply for discounted Oyster Card or pay-as-you-go options. 
Now, if you are sending your children to a private school, some of them might have school buses and you will see what your options are. Obviously, it'll depend how far the buses will travel to given where you live and where you're sending your children to school. Now that we've talked about the difference of options here in the UK and how you're gonna actually get your kids to school, why don't we talk about some of the best performing schools and where they're located. If you're gonna look at the top five performing boroughs or locations. The top three are actually outside of London. The first up is Kingston upon Thames is in southwest London. It's got an average property price of 838,000 but definitely is a top ranked area for sending your kids to school. Next up is Sutton in Surrey and that's a location in southeast of London where average property prices are about 522,000 pounds but that ranks next on our list. And third up is Barnett in northwest of London, and average property prices are 869,000 pounds. Finally, if you do want to be London-based, number four on the list is going to be Richmond, which is in southwest London. Just within London and start of the district line on the Richmond route, Richmond is a leafy suburban-like borough which is also close to many of the top independent private schools around London. It's got lots of parks, including Richmond Park and Kew Gardens to enjoy on non-school days. There are 28 state schools in the borough that have an outstanding Ofsted rating and a further 27 that are rated good. The top schools include Sacred Heart Primary School, which is a Roman Catholic primary school with after-school clubs, including gymnastics, football, and running or their St. Richard's Reynolds RC College, which is a co-educational Roman Catholic school for pupils aged four to 18 with a specialism in music. Or you might consider St. Stephen's School, which is a Church of England co-educational school that's state run. Affiliated with St. Stephen Church in Twickenham and regularly holds events there. They have also packed before and after school club roster covering rugby, ballet, orchestra, and much more. There's even a Lego animation and filmmaking program. These are all on a first come first serve basis and might have a small cost associated with them. Next up we can highlight Great Court School which is a mixed sex high school academy in sixth form. The school occupies a large area in Ham with playing fields and tennis courts. And finally on our list to highlight is Hampton High School, which is a co-educational secondary school with a sixth form. Average house prices in Richmond were about 861,000 pounds. I actually recommended Richmond in my top family friendly areas video, which you can definitely check out in the link above. And finally on our top five list of areas or boroughs to send your children is Kensington and Chelsea. A very prestigious high-end neighborhood in southwest London that has so much to offer, so it's actually not surprising that it offers some of the best schools as well. Chelsea is actually the top elementary and middle school district in the whole of the UK. If you're looking for a leafy area with incredible homes, riverside access, and fabulous restaurants and shops, then Chelsea just might be the place for you. Make sure to check out our area guide in Chelsea in terms of what the area has to offer. For Kensington, it's not just a great place for your kids' education. It's a perfect place for your cultural fix and actually at the university level as well. Top schools in the borough include Hill House School, which is International Junior School. It's an independent preparatory day school. Family run, the school provides up to 10 courses in Switzerland alongside their UK curriculum. Children are given an experience of a boarding school environment in the setting of a mountain village in French-speaking canton of Vaud, if you wanted to consider that as well. Or there's Sussex House School, which is an independent day school for boys age 8 to 13. Outstanding record for common entrance and scholarship results, and a strong reputation for music, drama, and artistic creativity. Or if your child's particularly gifted in the ballet space, there's the English National Ballet School, which is a specialist ballet school for talented dancers from the ages of 16 to 19. And finally, to highlight a university, we've got Imperial College London. This university has a mission to benefit society through excellence in science, engineering, medicine, and business. Chelsea average prices was 2.3 million, and Kensington was also 2.365 million. For special mentions, let's highlight the American School in London. This is an American, it follows the USA curriculum, it's located in St. John's Wood. It's definitely an area that attracts a lot of Americans, again, if you want to keep your children in the curriculum that you're used to from the States. For French expats, you might want to consider the Ecole 
Andre Malraux School. It's located in Ealing and follows French programs and schooling. And finally, let's highlight the International School of London for children aged 3 to 18. It offers an International Baccalaureate Diploma and it has its primary and middle school in Chiswick and the Diploma College in Ealing. So I hope you found this video helpful to giving you a great sense of your school options, whether it's private, state funded, or specialty throughout London and the UK. If you wanna know more about some of the areas we're talking about or thinking about relocating to London and you wanna pick the perfect neighborhood to go with the perfect school, make sure to reach out. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you wanna know more about London living in this fabulous city and all it has to offer. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure to check out my other videos on my YouTube channel where I share great tips and information about the London property market and living in this fabulous city. So that's Ugo Orense with Onyx Property Team and Keller Williams. Bye for now.